Yes, my friends, the third and final one has shown up. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show, Christmas week edition of the Mod Collection. Ultimately, I would say they tamed things down a little bit this year as compared to last year, but we still got a few cool ones to talk about. And let's start with Night Luminaries, one of Gibson's new banner guitars. So it's pretty much exactly what we were thinking it was going to be, just a multicolor sparkle metallic finish. It ended up being that they just painted over the pit guard itself, as well as our pointy output jack plate over here. So if that's not necessarily your style and you bought this guitar, you could swap it over to a different pit guard if you wanted to. But doing this just gives it kind of a cool non pit guarded vibe. We've got our zebra coils for our pickups, still the blingy gold hardware. Then it's got a matching headstock and truss rod cover. I mean, this one is pretty crazy. Then, oh, I didn't even realize this on launch day. I thought the whole entire thing was a sparkle back, but no, it's pure black on the back and the neck, but they did a sparkle stinger. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. I was tempted to get it just because it was on Gibson's banner. However, that one actually stayed around surprisingly a long time, a good couple of hours on the site, but it did end up finding a home. But I was honestly more excited about this one. They named it Polaris Sky. It was 5,300 and it was a Firebird custom. And generally we see these things in the mod collection for around 4,000 bucks. So that is a premium, but we've got a cool little star slash snowflake pattern thing going on here. And it's basically like a light blue widow effect going on for our binding. However, as you continue to zoom in here, it has the same style finish as that flying V, but dialed back a notch. It just has a few little sparkles here and there. So that's gonna be another beautiful night sky finish. They also did the same thing for the pick guard. And yes, indeed, that is a matching headstock. Although it doesn't look like they messed with the truss rod cover because of the logo being on it. But here you can kind of see the blue edge of the binding even on the neck. But now I'm curious about the back. No, it looks like it's all sparkly back here. No stingers going on. But surprisingly, at the time of recording, this one has not sold yet. And now this darn one. I saw it and I was like, ugh, that's pretty ugly. It's this hot pink metallic with purple and pink pinstripes going on. It's not the color scheme for me, but I could see how somebody might like it. All blacked out hardware on top of it. But it wasn't until I went back over it and I read, oh. Les Paul Baritone. Those are rare. I've documented one a long time ago, but now that makes complete sense why they're wanting 3300 bucks for it, because that's about what they go for. And it's been a good 10 plus years since these things have been in production, so it's actually a pretty rare model. I'd like to see Gibson bring them back, but this one had a special finish. I kind of wish they would have left the pin striping off of it, because I would say the finish actually looks pretty good from the back. But yes, if you thought that neck was a little bit too long, that's because it is. The Les Paul Baritone in this format is actually the longest scale length that Gibson's made on an electric guitar, as far as I'm aware, because most of Gibson's Baritones are 27 inches, like the Buckhead. However, these guys are a full 20 eight inches on their scale length. But oh my goodness. That's another one of those 2011 ones that's rumored to be return stock from the government after the raid. The bucket head was burnt during this time. Wouldn't that be freaky if we saw a weird refinished one-off bucket head? <laughs> I'd have to buy that no matter what the price. But before we continue, we need to hear a word from our sponsor, Sweetwater. Sweetwater, great place to buy gear. You can call somebody up, they can give you recommendations, and they carry just about anything that any musician could ever want. But my favorite thing about buying gear from Sweetwater is being able to see the actual photos of instruments I'm looking at. Because when you buy a high-end guitar, you kind of want to know, does it have a cool flame top? Does it weigh 13 pounds? What's the serial number? Because I'm looking for a birthday guitar for my son that was just born or something. And if all that wasn't enough, they also have a modifications team that can pluck your instrument for you, swap out the pickups, do a refret, a whole bunch of stuff. Anything you can think of, they can make it happen. Thank you, Sweetwater, for sponsoring tonight's episode. Now let's get back to the guitars. This Access Custom was really interesting. They called it Melon Fade Metallic at 6,500. I think I would have called it something more sinister. I mean, it's got a great bright red and then it goes into a more pinkish hue but the gold really works with that and the white plastics we got the p94 pickups in here the back is all natural with new moto back plates but it's an access custom so you got the access carve right here and the belly cut it went a little crazy putting grover imperial tuners on it but i thought that was a pretty cool one and now for a strange one labeled as a 60 standard for 3500 bucks so almost a thousand dollar premium in dark natural satin we kind of have the return of the one that we were talking about a couple of weeks ago 
but this time we have a slanted single coil in the neck as well. I wouldn't mind demoing it, but I'm not sure I would want that to be my main guitar. But who knows, it might sound fantastic. But the headstock has no silk screen, and you've got the black tuner tips, and it came with a case. But whoa, they're saying that's a Charlie Christian neck pickup? I normally associate those looking like this, or maybe even something like this. Maybe it's a different model that I'm not aware of, but that doesn't look like any Charlie Christian model I've ever seen. But how's this one for festive? 1275 double neck for 7,500 bucks. And if you were in the market for a newish double neck, getting one in a red metal flake finish like this just in time for Christmas, that makes sense. However, there's a very limited market for these. But that one would look great on stage. But now, I was rather fond of this Les Paul Custom. They called it Amanita Red Top, which is apparently a type of fungus mushroom. I see what they were going for now. I don't know, it kind of reminded me of like a cartoon dinosaur egg. And I like the whole clear pick card that they've got going on here. The white plastic seems to be a theme this time. And ooh, they gave it push-pull pots. And they could have went crazy and did the design on the back and sides too, but they just left it alone. Gave the headstock a white truss rod cover as well. It's not my favorite looking Les Paul in the world, but it was unique. I guess I can't say I'm not surprised that it hasn't sold yet. But following that up is Aquamarine Triber Satin on a standard 50s. So we got a whole bunch of stuff going on here. Kind of a cool custom color, blacked out plastics and hardware, pole pieceless bridge pickup. Apparently that's a 500T with a P94 in the neck. Ooh, nice. Matching green logo, oddly dinged up headstock, and a natural back and sides. Wow, that one's chunky, 10 and a half pounds. But if that mushroom custom wasn't for you, for about a thousand bucks cheaper, you could have got pearl pole satin, you know, pearl and purple blunt together. This thing looks pretty angelic. And I really like the creamed plastics. It works well with this finish. And then when you flip over to the back, you see it's got the same stuff, but it's more of like a, a lavender lilac color. And then, hey, look at this. Doesn't that look familiar? A matching headstock. I actually documented a very similar guitar last year that I called the Sugar Plum Fairy. So this one's kind of a repeat, but not exactly, since apparently it's done up in a satin finish. They always like to spice up a junior. Here's an emerald satin version at 4,600 bucks. They got rid of the pick guard, but then did this, which makes it look like one of the melody makers, but yet then you still have a full P90 pickup here. Gave it a matching headstock with an old timey Gibson logo. That logo is much bigger than it normally is. That looks so strange. Really off centered truss rod cover. And then the back looks like this. This one was desperately crying for a black stinger. I'd imagine 4600 would be a pretty tough sell for that one though. I anticipate that one sitting around for a bit. But hey, check this out, another 1P9335. But what's really strange is it looks like it was made this way on purpose. Like it wasn't modified from just a neck pickup one because we would have had the additional controls here. But we've got like a Les Paul Jr. style pick guard. In fact, that might just be a Les Paul Jr. pick guard. Screwed into the top in two locations to hide the tenon join right here to the body. And then the regular bracket here to secure the other one. And the back looks about the same. But that price seems rather high for scaling this model back. And it's not a custom shop. It's just the regular 335 production model. I think it'd be fun to see these as like a limited edition. Most 335s don't have P90 pickups either, so it's very unique. I like what the mod guys are doing here. But if one pickup's not your style, how about the Epiphone USA Casino with a third one? On top of that, we've got our high performance UFO style knobs over here. That's an interesting one. Speaking of 335s with P90s, uh, apparently this was a model. Okay, that's why that doesn't look familiar. So this is part of Gibson's exclusives program. I had completely forgotten about this one. It's because it comes stock with these cream plastics. So when you convert that over to ebony, it's like, wow, yeah, that changes the whole vibe drastically. But it looks like they modified it with a Bigsby and they blacked everything out so you just can't see anything. That is a true black hole. And hey, that was actually a $400 discount too. And now we've got Sassafras Blast appears to be like a black and reddish brown mix together. The color here really complements the fretboard. That's actually really cool how that fretboard is all streaky like that. And we've got a reverse burst going on with our neck. For another flavorful opportunity, the Huckleberry Space Cake. I'm not sure where they're getting the names for these things, but I bet this would look really cool in person because it looks like it's a really dark metallic purple that maybe has a color shifting effect to it. It looks like it's got an APR1 bridge on it. That might just be the USA style one though. But it appears to be a Les Paul Modern because we actually have the real Mother of Pearl inlays here. So you guys aren't tricking me even with your 70s witch hat knobs on here. 
And yes, indeed, they left the back alone in a natural finish, and you can see the modern swoop. I'd be shocked to see that one still be available. And it's not. It found a home. And then lastly, we had this standard 60s that they didn't really do much to. They left the top alone, they just swapped out the pickup. But then apparently this is a satin back and side. So this might have started as one of the newer faded ones, and they just glossed up the top. It's possible. Moving on from the mod collection, let's see what the demo shop has to offer us this week. There was a lot of good players grade stuff. We've got an L5 in the demo shop, you don't see these too often. In fact, I think it's only the second or third one that we've seen, and these things are expensive, custom order, instruments only. So this ebony one must not have been up to their standards. I mean, all that is is buffing compound, you could clean that out. A couple of scratches by the knobs. It might sound crazy to say 9000 is not a bad price. But this is the staple of the jazz guitar world. And you have to wait a long time for these things to get built. Then another one from the Gibson Exclusives Collection. We've got a 345. I just thought that looked striking in the black finish with the gold hardware. That's a nice looking guitar. There was a Flying V in Oxblood finish. Oxblood is basically a really, 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 really deep red finish if you get it in the light just right. But from a couple feet away, it should technically look black. But this is the reason why I wanted to share this one with you. So this is one of those Flying Vs that had the logo on the headstock and then it just had a regular truss rod cover on it. However, as part of the modifications, they put one of the normal Flying V truss rod covers on it and it just ended up making it look really weird. But you got locking tuners. But then if that wasn't enough look at that you've got the government green flying v case infinitely more rare you don't ever see those things pop up i'd be curious to know how many of those does gibson have left over or yeah, did the government seize a whole bunch of those extra cases and that's why we're starting to see these things and in my crocomelon review looking at one of these in person it does appear to be the original government series one cases so not just a reissue but I could be wrong on that. I haven't actually side-by-side -side comparisoned it, but it was a nice TKL Canadian-made case. This one was a little bit blasphemous. You've got the Slash Appetite here, and they installed a pick guard on it. That's funny. I suppose when you're saving almost 600 bucks, what does it really matter? And to wrap things up, the European demo shop side of things had a couple of nice deals. Again, players grade stuff, but this is what stood out to me. This is just a stellar deal. I don't know how nobody's bought this in a whole, whole day. 5,500, including everything. This guitar over there is probably about 8,000 USD brand new. Once you add in value added tax and whatnot. So to be able to get it for 55 and it's rated as excellent condition. I mean, this is a brand new model. We had just reviewed this, although in a custom color. It's a good top, nice and transparent. You got all the wavy wood grain that you could want. And it's not all beat up. I'm sure this will not last too much longer. You don't see the ES-195 every day. Bigsby, stock P94 pickups. Very cool Trini Lopez style neck right here with the inlays and the Firebird headstock. So it's kind of like a Trini Lopez 335 mixed with like an ES-175 is essentially the vibes I'm getting from this one. This was a rather unassuming gold top at about 5,000, but then, ah, 60th anniversary. So these things happened before I was paying attention to brand new guitars. And everybody talks about the 60th anniversary R9s, or maybe even the 1960s ROs, but nobody really ever talks about the 57 60th anniversary. So I'm sure I'll document one of these one day, but essentially there was like four different colors that you could get on these. For example, this is just the gold top. There was also like an all gold one. But they made these in very limited production numbers. If I remember correctly, it was like 60 of each finish or something. The truss rod cover on them is absolutely horrid, but hey, it's an anniversary model. This was just a ridiculous deal. Neck through 12 string SG. I actually documented one of each color in this episode. But 2000 was way too low. Like that's a $3,500 minimum guitar. These are collectible because they're weird neck through 12 string SGs. I still have my two in my collection. I, I just like having them because they're a little bit different from everything else. And if I'm remembering correctly, they only made 75 of each color. So congratulations to whoever got that for two grand. Fantastic pickup, especially for that market. Then lastly, yeah, I just wanted to bring this up. 
Yeah, weird EB bass. I really don't know what Gibson was thinking with these. I'm not much of a bass player, but it's a weird offset shape. Doesn't appear to be tied down into history or anything. It just looks like other basses. And then the weird headstock is so off-putting with three on this side, two on that side. But with the Gibson logo having to be there, there's not really a good way to balance that headstock unless you make it a six string bass. That's going to do it for me tonight, my friends. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.